How should I deal with a really shit day of training? Good question, Cal. So, firstly, you give yourself permission to have bad training days. So if you look at any area of your life, there will be things that don't go well. If you're in a relationship, there will be good days and bad days. Your nutrition, there will be good days and bad days. In your work life, there will be good days and bad days. Some days you'll sleep well, some days you won't. Some days the other drivers on the road are, are gonna drive and let you in and other days they're gonna cut you off. So you have to understand that like any other area or facet of your life, there will be ups and downs. It would be strange if there were not ups and downs. But what we're looking for is a general trend and a general upward trend. So if you have one bad training day a week, that's okay. If you have a bad training week, that's okay. If you have a bad training month or year, then it's something that we need to address. As long as the general trend is upwards. If you feel like you're training better on the Friday than on the Monday, or on the fourth week of the month instead of the first week of the month, or the 12th month of the year instead of the last, uh, or the first month of the year. As long as the trend is upwards, we are okay. So you should firstly give yourself permission to have these bad training days. Second point I wanna make is a bad training day, the question is not about the training day, your question I think is about the self-confidence. And low self-confidence can be some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. So if your self-confidence is low, then you expect less of yourself, Therefore, when you go to perform, you underperform. Your performance is low, therefore you expect less of yourself, which damages your self-confidence, and you go into this really dangerous downward spiral. So if you give yourself permission to have the bad days, and you look at the training in the context of big picture, rather than just in the context of small little pieces and taking a micro view to what should really be a macro approach to your health, your training, your fitness, then it's gonna improve your self-confidence a lot. Almost by definition, a training day is a bad training day because it stands out. Otherwise, we just call it a training day. So the fact, Cal, that you're having a bad training day tells us that the rest of the time, it must be pretty good. Because if, if everything was a three out of 10, then you would just assume that that's how training is. So a bad training day, guys, can give you a bit of contrast to say that, okay, maybe the rest of my training is going really well because this is standing out so much. Again, if we're looking at self-confidence here and the effect that this training day can have on your self-confidence, you have to understand that the biggest impactor of self-confidence is your own performance. So the top two predictors of confidence are you being able to perform a task in the past and then you seeing your peers or your contemporaries completing that task. So in sports psychology, those are the big two that we would work on with an athlete who has low confidence or low self-confidence. So if we look at the first of these, if we look at self-confidence stemming from your own ability to perform a skill, let's say that you, you snatch 100 kilos. If you snatch 100 kilos, you will have confidence that you can probably snatch that 100 kilos again. If you've never snatched that weight before, then the confidence will be low because your self-belief is going to be low because you've never proven to yourself that you can do something. So if you have a bad lifting day and your max snatch is 110, and on a certain day you can't hit 100 kilos, again, the mistake people make is taking that small, maybe two seconds of lifting or that one day of training, or that one week of training, and amplifying that to be everything. It's not, it's a very small piece. And like I said, look at the big picture, take a bird's eye macro view, and as long as the general trend is upwards, then you're gonna be okay. Self-talk is really important if you do find that your confidence is down. So I just wanted to take you through a couple of pointers for self-talk and what you should actually be doing to help to correct it. So there are three steps I'm gonna take you through. The first thing is you must be aware that that self-talk is happening. So let's say that it's, it's a really hot day, you're training on a hot day. Your self-talk is, it's too hot today, I can't perform well because of the heat. So identifying that that self-talk is happening is the first step. So identifying that that inner voice is going on. The second step is called thought stopping. So this is where you would say stop and physically have some sort of cue word which is gonna stop and halt that thought pattern. 
So the first step, geez, it's really hot today, I can't perform well. Stop. Step two is your thought stopping. And then step three, we turn that around and replace it with something which is productive. Now the important thing here, you can't lie to yourself because you're smart enough to realize that that is not the truth. So you can't say, ah oh, no, it's a beautiful, cool day. I can perform really well. The heat is not an issue at all. The heat is an issue, it is a hot day. So you have to be realistic and say, well, yes, it is hot, but exercising in heat is going to give me a whole bunch of adaptations that athletes who are training in nice, cool, 22 degree weather today aren't going to get. This heat is an advantage for me. So identify the self-talk, thought stop, and then replace it with something which is no less true, but a lot more productive. Also important to remember with the whole self-confidence thing and with a bad training day, that what we're looking for and what is going to determine your success is input. It's not output. What I mean by that, if we go back to that same 100 kilo snatch example, what's important is the effort it takes to do that. That's what the stimulus is that you're gonna to respond to. It's not the output. So it's not important how much weight is on the bar, it's important how difficult it is. So if you, if you do a back squat at 100 kilos, and it's a five out of 10, so it's pretty easy, it moves fast, it's a pretty smooth lift. Or you do a back squat at 80 kilos, but it feels like an eight out of 10 in terms of difficulty, you will actually get stronger because of the effort that came from the the five out of 10, or the eight out of 10, sorry, in terms of difficulty, stronger than you would for a lift that actually felt easier even though it was heavier. So using techniques like slow eccentrics and pause squats, these are designed to make you work hard even though the load is not super high. So remember, on a bad training day, if things aren't working but you're still trying hard and putting the effort in, it's the effort which is gonna give you results, not the output. So there are no wasted training days and it's how you respond to those training days which is really important.